the prescriptions and borders Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put around this family to provide the security and the tranquility and the stability of these families. Last week we gave some examples of some of the recipes in the Sunnah of, of the Prophet وسلم, how our families could be stable and tranquil and happy families. In continuation, today we need to show what other measures Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put to provide for this family. The family which is the most important building bread of our societies. The family that needs to be healthy all the time. When the family is okay, our communities are okay. When the family is okay, the husband and wife are okay. The children are okay. The, the neighborhood is all right. The society is healthy and the whole nation and the humanity is okay. So the family being a partnership, the family is a partnership, between, mainly between the husband and wife, but actually it is between two families, if you can tell, the family of the husband and the wife. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us instructions to cover all the scenarios. So being part of this partnership, of this contract is very important. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also knows that sometimes there needs to be an exit. For certain reasons, there has to be an emergency exit out of the place, even the masjid. Huh? This is one of the best places you could ever be. Our civil defense will not allow us to, to use the masjid without checking the exits. Huh? Although people are welcome here, but they also need to exit when they need to. So there has to be some emergency exits. And family is similar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an emergency exit for family. But He put conditions for that. And He gave us the guidelines to follow. And He said, Tilka hududullah. These are the borders Allah is drawing for you to respect and to observe. وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ And those who will transgress, who will break these borders, huh? you think he will say they will offend Allah? No. They will hurt Allah? No. فَقَدْ ظَلَمَ نَفْسَهِ They will only wrong themselves. When Allah makes something prohibited, if Allah prohibits something, it's for our own interest. Not because He gets hurt if we do it. Allah prohibits alcohol, right? And drugs, anything that's similar, Allah prohibits it. If we consume it, if we do that, we only wrong ourselves. Even if we don't see the consequences. Huh? Allah prohibited interest, riba. And if we do it, even if we think it's good for us, it's, in reality it's bad for us as individuals and in humanity. So we only wrong ourselves if we do against what Allah is telling us to do. This is what Allah says. Those who will transgress and go beyond these borders, they will only hurt themselves. The, the disadvantage or the harm will only touch you, not Allah. In exactly the same thing in family affairs and in divorce. Allah said, Allah gave us the recipe. Like He told us how to keep huh, this family together 
and to take all the precautions and the measures to keep it. If we decide to divorce, to split the family, Allah gave us guidelines. That's how we do it right. And you know what? If we follow that, you will not find anyone regretting divorce. But because majority of people go for divorce in the wrong way, the majority and the vast majority, they regret it after that. But it's too late most of the time. Today we want to learn about these measures, these guidelines Allah gave us if we decide to break this family for a for genuine reason. But he stated by saying that, yes, I allowed you divorce, but it's the most hated to Allah. As in the hadith, in the abqad al halal ila Allah al talaq. Allah made it halal, but for very specific reasons. Why Allah hates it? Although it's halal, because many people misuse it. Even if it's an emergency exit, no one likes it. Hmm? So let's learn about these measures and let's see how important they are and then they will, we will appreciate it more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al Talaq specifically, it starts with that. Ya ayyuhal nabiyu, idha talaqtum al nisa'a, he's addressing the Prophet. Huh? So when he's addressing the Prophet, he means all of us, him and his followers. If you divorce women, then divorce them for the prescribed days or times. And count these days and times. So what do we learn from that? Number one, divorce is one divorce at a time. Hmm? Divorce is one divorce at a time, not two, not three, like majority of people go for. Huh? But you know what? If people don't follow the sunnah and what Allah is saying, still divorce happens, but they will be sinful. So they lose twice. Right? They lose twice. They don't follow and the divorce takes place. Someone says, I was very angry and I divorced my wife. Is there a way back? No. Allah told you don't do it this way and you insisted not to listen. So you'll be punished by no, the divorce counts. This is one divorce, huh? you pay for it. So Allah subhanahu in here it says, wa ahsul idda means one divorce at a time. Where majority of people will say talaq three times, which is, means end of it, end of this relationship, and they cannot go back together. A'udhu billah. Allah says, don't do it. And we insist to do it. Some people, like the Imam Ahmad today, they will even say 100 times the divorce, just to make sure. <laughs> don't, don't, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. Allah told you something very important at the end of this. Maybe Allah will bring something different for you. What is this different? You will change your mind. Huh? How many times you went shopping and you changed your mind? In one day, in half an hour. Huh? You went to uh, this shop, you found something and you liked it very much, you bought it. You went to the other shop, you find something better, you regret that. Huh? How many times it happens? All the time. It happens with all of us. Allah says, follow my instructions because things could change. How could change? Divorce her once huh? and then count al idda What is al idda It's the time after divorce that the wife has to stay together in, at home four months huh? four months to stay during this time 
maybe you both will change your mind and you will come back together. This is number one condition. It's one divorce at a time. Not three, not two, not hundred. Huh? Because you know what? You have three chances. Divorce. Once, the second, the third is the end of it. After that, this, there is no door out. There is no door at all. Huh? Second. To divorce at a certain time, uh, at a certain time of the year, or a certain time of the month, at a certain time where you cannot divorce while the wife is during her period. This is against the sunnah, it's haram. But if you do it, it counts. And you are sinful. Huh? So someone does it, they say, well, it's, it's wrong, so it doesn't count. No, it does count, as the Imam highlighted by all the ulama. And you are sinful. You get the sin for doing it against Allah's instructions. So it has to be done not during the period. Is that all? No. Not even during, outside of the period when you had intimate relation. It has to be after a period where you didn't have any intimate relation between the husband and wife. This is the second condition. If you think of these, you will find like people cannot be out of their mind when they say, I was angry, I was nervous, I was that. It gives people time to be fully focused and fully understanding what they're doing. Not as a reaction. Someone is angry with his wife and then a divorce. No, this is not meant to be. This is wrong. No. So the second condition is divorce has to take place. If it takes place, it has to be after the period when there was no intimate relations. If they had any intimate relation, they have to wait until the next period. And after that period, then it could happen, as per the Sunnah. This is the second. What's the third condition? لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن ولا يخرجن If you divorce your wife, don't take her out of her home, out of your home. You, know, you, sh you should not, you cannot, you must not huh? tell her to go out of the home. Means to kick her out of the home or send her to her family or brothers or parents. No? She has to stay at her home with the husband during this period, which is Al-Idda wa Ahsul Idda. During these four months plus. Can you see? Huh? What is happening? She stays there, they still uh, act together. At any moment, we could reconvene the relationship. Any moment. So they live, they, after one day, two days, one month, two months, it's very likely. That's why you divorce once. And they stay at home, and then the shaitan, whatever, will leave. Huh? And then you can think again and again, you see the children, you see, you remember the good days together, you reconsider the reasons for this divorce, and you most likely will decide as yes, we will convene, reconvene our relationship. These three conditions are very important. Very important. Allah told us these are the waters Allah put for you. Those who don't follow my instructions, they wrong themselves. They commit injustice to themselves if they do that. So if we follow, you know what it means? It means we have less huh? divorce, less separation. Even if they divorce once, no one may know about it. Huh? Maybe many homes have divorced once, but if they follow the sunnah, no one will ever know they had it because they quiet and they live together huh? and they reconvened and they 
uh, went on for the relationship normally. They don't have to go to court. They don't have to bring other people to re-initiate uh, or reinstate their marriage. No, not at all. It's between you and Allah. Even if you divorce your wife three times, it's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's your conscience, it's your deed, it's your iman, which will make you acknowledge that. So if you divorce your wife, it has to be divorced once, they have to stay home, it has to be during, a, after a period where there was no intimate relationship. And they have to stay home during this whole period, during all the idda. The three months for the divorcee. For these three months, they have to stay at home. Huh? They have to stay together with the husband. And they can resume the relationship anytime without a new contract. Because if they do it three times, the third time is the last one and they cannot go back together. Until maybe if she gets married to another person and maybe later if she gets divorced, it should not be a, 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 an excuse to do it. That's haram. But she has to start another life and maybe he will start another life. These are Allah tells us do that so you protect your families and protect your life. Once Al Hassan, the grandson of the Prophet ﷺ, divorced one of his wives. And he gave her a gift when he divorced her. A 10,000 dirham, it was a big money, a big amount of money at that time. And when she was given this money, she was brought this money, she looked at it. She, what small thing compared to the company of beloved husband. He just got divorced and see, how she is talking about the husband whom she just separated with she never mentioned anything wrong about him about their relationship in fact she just called him the beloved one when you when a husband divorces allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to give a gift to this lady and this i need to stop there for a moment after many years of relationship and life together, what is it to get rid of this lady and send her out? Maybe to have families, their parents or brothers or whatever. And sometimes she doesn't have parents. And you don't even care how she will have a life after that. This is not the traits of believers. Allah says otherwise. Allah says, those who are men and ethical and good people will take care of them even after they get divorced. Some people will kick her out of the home and he stays at home. It should be the opposite. He should give her the home with the children and he goes out if that's the case. Allah Taala wants this human relationship at its most, which is marriage between husband and wife, to be protected all the time, all the time, even after divorce, our qualities are manifested. So, one person was asked, "Why you divorced your, huh? Why you divorced your ex-wife?" He said, I cannot talk about other people. <laughs> He's just give, giving them a lesson. Huh? Why you force me to expose huh? things I don't want to? Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wala tansa wil fadla baynakum. Don't forget the favors and the good days that you had together. Who does that? not believers believers will always respect that always are honest always are loyal to these good days even if it's one good day that we spend together husband and wife 
I'll be loyal to that. And I would never turn this into animosity. And because we don't follow the sunnah in divorce, we, we go to courts and we see how many cases we have of husband and wife who used to be loving uh, couples and now they fight in the courts. Fight for money, fight for kids, fight for the house, fight for whatever. <clears throat> this is because we don't follow the sunnah in doing divorce. If we follow it, we will have less divorce and we will have reasonable and meaningful divorce. This divorce is our emergency exit. And you know what? In emergency exits, if you know that, they will tell you, break the glass, get the hammer, right? And then break the other place and then get out. And you know why is that? Why they used to do this sometimes is you have to break a glass to get something so you can open the emergency exit. So people appreciate this is emergency. This is not something to fiddle with and to mess with all the time. And the Prophet said, this is even the expression of divorce you cannot mess with. Huh? You cannot use the word of divorce to joke with your husband, uh, with your wife. When, if you joke with that, it's against you. Divorce, don't use it because it counts. And marriage and freeing slaves. Huh? Because of that, huh? how, how, how critical these areas are. So don't even use these expressions of divorce to joke with. In summary, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us guidelines. Allah said, these are hududullah, these are the borders. Allah drawing for you to protect you, to give you protection. Follow it, you'll be okay. If you don't follow it, وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ ظَلَمَ نَفْسَهِ Those who will transgress and go beyond these borders, they will cultivate hardship. And this is what we're doing. Many homes broken because of that. Courts are full of cases because of that. Many issues because of that. If we follow the sunnah, don't divorce but once at a time. Divorce after the period, before having any intimate relationship, and stay together for this whole idda, this three plus months. Stay together and you have to spend in the family, spend in the wife. Even if it ends up to separate, you gotta be gift enough. If she has no family, whatever, the good person will give her maybe a home to live with, with the children. He will not take the children out of this mother. This is not right. This is not ethical. You don't need to punish huh? one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our homes and teach us what is good for us. Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil alameen. May Allah make this country safe and peaceful and give victory to our armies. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil alameen. Salli Allahumma barik. على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه